Hello, Tim from Fairplay now on the 4th January 2022. I don't know about you, but there seems to be a sense of expectancy, a sense of, I don't know, something big about to happen. I've seen this from quite a few sources, uh, from some stand in the park uh, people. The last stand in the park thing I went on was, uh, our weekly meet down in the pub the day before Christmas Eve. I haven't been there for a while, but I will be going to the pub uh, and to the actual park uh, this week. So getting back into that. But I remember on that last meeting, people there were saying, I wonder what's gonna happen next. It was the thrust of the argument. And coming into today, looking at a few bits and pieces, uh, people seem to be asking the same question, what's going to be happening next? And there does seem to be a palpable sense. I don't know if you're feeling it. Uh, I have, and I'm not the only one, as I say. And I've got no idea whether this big thing is going to be positive, negative, or what. And I do, rely, um, I do remember the feeling this way and a lot of other people feeling this way kind of this time last year as well and okay a lot of stuff did happen as it transpires uh, through 2021 both good and bad but uh, it, it's more sort of dribs and drabs it wasn't one big huge thing uh, sort of a world shattering event but uh, which people seem to be thinking this might be but I've got no idea. Maybe you can uh, sort of leave a comment in the comment section below if you've got this feeling and you've been talking to people and what it might be. I know there's a few different theories about what it could be, but I'm not going to go into that now. Um, although I will mention uh, this is something that started happening just before Christmas and I'll come on to it in a little bit, but one way this whole lurgy nonsense thing could come unraveling very very quickly indeed is just if some major body somewhere in the world um kind of real mainstream major body i'm talking about somewhere in the world kind of came out and against uh, the whole narrative uh both regarding uh, the ailment itself and the treatment, the main treatment against it as well. It just need one big body to come out against it. Yeah, I realise they might not do it willingly, um, which is probably the case at the moment. But if they were got into some kind of legal half Nelson or checkmate situation where they were forced to do it, uh, that would be a different story. And as soon as someone like that, let's just take, for example, the London Metropolitan Police Force, let's say someone like that kind of came out against the mainstream narrative. Uh, well, that would be game over. If the big Vs had to be suspended, uh, well, immediately that is your passport's gone, your kind of uh, uh, discrimination against un people gone and the whole sorry narrative gone. And okay, you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, right, the uh, Met police are never gonna do that. Well, I'm gonna tell you, uh, just before Christmas, uh, a guy caught, I don't even know if I can mention these names in full, uh, but I'll sort of try and come out with ways that you can guess them. But there is a certain British doctor, uh, Dr. Sam, and his surname is the opposite colour to black. So you can probably guess who I'm talking about. And he's the doctor who was speaking out against certain things and he was in danger of being struck off, but he got uh, some very switched on lawyers 
to win his case and that's quite big news back in kind of early December there and it doesn't look like he's rested on his laurels because he's sort of gone straight from the defensive onto the attack and him together with uh, the ex-police officer, uh, retired police officer um, and his surname kind of sounds a little bit like uh, one of those implements old sailors used to use. Um, I think you know what I'm talking about. His surname's a little bit like that. And I think his first name is Mark. Uh, yeah, Mark. And they are working in conjunction with a couple of lawyers, uh, Philip Highland of PJH Law and Lois Bayless of Broad Yorkshire Law. Uh, I'm sure I can mention their names. So, because I don't think they're so well known, uh, but I think um, Philip Highland is the lawyer who got uh, Dr. Sam uh, off his initial kind of being struck off. You know, he won. He's the guy that helped him win that case. So, some pretty heavyweight people, and apparently, they have submitted to um, the Met Police, which is why I kind of mentioned mentioned them a bit uh, ago. Uh, they went into Hammersmith Police Station and the uh, they've actually got a crime reference number. I won't read out what that is, but it's for misconduct, uh, misconduct in public office and gross negligent manslaughter. And that charge is being ag uh, made against um, certain powers that shouldn't be. I'm sure you can probably guess who they might be as far as the UK is concerned at least and apparently um, they have been assigned a detective constable and a detective sergeant and they are having uh, a lot of evidence submitted, submitted to them all the time and it is their duty they can't just sort of do away with it or get around it they have to uh, by law kind of examine and look into this and they are being sort of constantly pressured to do so by these people I've just mentioned on a daily basis and they're also being asked for um, you know for the Met Police to immediately uh, sort of recommend or enforce don't know what it would be uh, a suspension of the whole Big V program so that's why I'm kind of saying that this particular body might not necessarily want to do it, but they may well be put into kind of a half Nelson situation where they have to do it. And then the whole sorry house of cards comes tumbling down uh, sort of not too long after that one, I thought. So this is a case I'm going to be kind of following with avid interest over the next few weeks. Um, it does kind of end, the, the thing here uh, does end, and it kind of says, uh, rest assured, the work to stop this and bringing those responsible to justice will continue unabated. Uh, we need everyone to pull together and work together. If you get knocked back, be persistent and insistent and um, persistent and insistent <laughs> and remember the police work for us so yeah they work for us so that's another way we can get them into the uh, the half Nelson or the checkmate position uh, so um, it, he's saying here he ends it saying updates will be forthcoming as and when anything major happens so don't get your hopes up too much about this these things keep coming to the police and to the courts only to get knocked back in one way shape form or the other um but can that keep happening i mean surely because these court cases are going on all over the place now not just here in the uk but all over the world uh, you got um, another doctor dr reiner who's, uh, well, I think he's a doctor and a lawyer in Germany. He's doing a lot of stuff. And all of these things um, are starting to come forward now. They've got the evidence together, or most of it. 
and the cases are ready to go, prepared. And even if 10 times, yeah, 10 of them get knocked back, there's going to be uh, a police force or a court somewhere that isn't corrupt or not, not as corrupt as the powers it shouldn't be uh, would wish and I think this is going to come out. So I left a comment somewhere on a video that I watched and I really do think 2022 is going to be the year of court cases and pretty big court cases relating to all of this kind of thing. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye, like I say, on this one and all the other ones as well. I think uh, Michael O'Bernasier is sort of uh, uh, bringing a case forward somewhere as well. So it is happening and stay tuned. I will be updating you on any developments as I find, find them out myself. And on that note, I'll leave it there for today. Back tomorrow. Tim from Fairplay now. Thanks for watching.